Somebody celebrate the love of Jesus some more. Come on, come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Don't stop. Can you hear me tell your neighbor, say, Jesus loves me. Say, he loves me anyhow. He loves me the way I am. Say, his love for me is unconditional. Say, will you love me like that? <laughs> I appreciate your neighbor. They will love you. Yeah, your neighbor will love you like that. Praise God. You know, there's nothing like being assured of God's love. It's nothing like having an assurance that God loves you and that the, the most important people in your life also love you. It, it, it gives one a sense of peace in life when you don't have to you know, watch your back all the time because the people that God has placed around you, you are fully persuaded of their love, their intentions towards you, and then you are also fully persuaded of God's love and his intentions towards you. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 28, say, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. You know, I, I, I once sat in front of uh, uh, a man who just lost his wife and I wanted to quote that scripture and had a struggle in my spirit. But I had to quote it all the same because how do you explain to somebody uh, that all things work together for good? For the, for, for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose uh, when it looks like God permitted uh, somebody that is that close uh, to be taken away from you. And sometimes we lose a job, we lose a friend, uh, uh, you know, uh, married or any relationship seems to be falling apart and then we start to second guess the love of God in our lives. Sometimes we lose money. And then it starts to affect, you know, how we feel about the love of God in our lives. I just want to assure somebody this morning. If you have lost anything at all, it's because of God that you have not lost everything. And I need you to understand that we don't measure the love of God by the things that are available to us or the things that are not available. We don't measure the love of God by, by anything else but by the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. That's how we measure the love of God. When Jesus hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. That's how we measure the love of God. Every other thing rests on that. Squarely on what Christ has done. Can you hear me tell your neighbor today, say, Jesus finished it. Say, God loves me. He sent Christ. I said, Jesus did not do half measure. He did everything. He sacrificed his life. He gave his life for me. Can you hear me? Lift your right hand to Jesus and say, I'm grateful for your sacrifice. Say, I'm grateful for your sacrifice. I'm grateful for your sacrifice. For everyone joining us from far and near, we want to welcome you uh, to the service today. This is the Elevation Church broadcasting from Pieces Conference Center in Lekki, Lagos. Wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, I wanted to put distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed by the teaching and preaching of God's word today. The Bible says God sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. We believe in the potency of the word of God to transform lives, to change destinies, to repair, to renew, to heal, to set free, to deliver, to give life and to raise something that is dead or dying uh, uh, and, and bring the power of resurrection into every situation. That's why we know that if anything is dying around you right now, if a relationship is dying, if a career is dying, as you sit tight and recognize the power in the word of God and listen with uh, the intention to do and to practice and to work in wisdom, life will come back to you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say it better. Amen. Amen. Let's share a word of prayer together. Our Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. As we go into your word today, we ask that your presence will pervade and permeate this atmosphere, that you make it conducive for healings, for miracles, for restoration, for resurrection. And we thank you because the, your word will not leave us the same. It will impart wisdom to us. We will gain revelation. 
uh, we will no longer be ruled by situations and circumstances, but will be ruled uh, by your counsel and your purpose for this season. The Holy Spirit will give you permission to move over every life, everyone in the room, everyone online, uh, and bring a transformation into our lives in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say it better. Amen. Amen. Are we ready for God's word today? Uh, the special thing about today is that we are wrapping up this teaching series. It's the fourth major message of the series, uh, and uh, we're wrapping up uh, the series, uh, the Loving and Living series for this year, which we have tabbed Shatterproof. If you have not been in church, it's your first time at the Elevation Church. Uh, we welcome you very specially, and if you're back after a long while, we also welcome you specially. Uh, but I want to encourage you to get into the messages that were preached this month. Last week, uh, we, we spoke about shared vision. Shared vision, the power of shared vision as something that can uh, make for a shatterproof experience in our marriage. We, we said passion can separate people, but vision brings us together. We encourage everyone uh, with some questions that you, you, you left the service with to go and consider you know, uh, um, how you, you, you want to create a sense of shared vision in, in your relationship uh, and in your marriages. And I hope you are working on those questions. I hope you are asking those questions. As we wrap up this series today, uh, I've tagged this, uh, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. We want to speak to divine patterns and how we build according to uh, God-ordained patterns and the kind of result uh, that's available to us when we build according to God-ordained, uh, you know, uh, patterns. In the third service today, we'll also be leading couples in exchanging their vows. We'd love to do that uh, annually as a reminder of the covenant that we share together as Christian couples. So if you uh, don't mind, you can join in the third service, even if you're in this service, and even if you're online, you can come back into the third service uh, with your spouses. Even if you're not together, you can join together and exchange your vows together also virtually. Uh, I want to encourage you to do that. It's just a sweet reminder uh, of the covenant that we share, and it's, there's a need for us to uh, perhaps officially remind ourselves as we go through uh, the vow renewal every year. As it is in heaven. Genesis chapter 6, I love to read from about verse 13 of Genesis chapter 6. As it is in heaven. We're talking about the power of patterns and how we should follow patterns if we want a guaranteed result. The power of patterns. We're also going to talk about the power of material when it comes to building. And then we're going to talk about the power of metrics how we measure success, and how it affects what we're doing. You know, when you set up, I mean, for those of us who run businesses and organizations, we talk about, uh, you know, KPIs uh, uh, and all that. Uh, we try to put some things in place that guarantee that we'll achieve our result at the end of the day. There are things you do today that guarantee a desired result. When goals are set within organizations, then we are portion responsibilities, and then everyone has to think through it from a particular point of view. What are the key success factors? What are the key performance indicators that will guarantee that this goal that was set, we're going to meet it? And it's the daily achievement of those key success factors or key performance indicators that, that actually tilt us towards the achievement of our goals. When it comes to our marriage, our relationships, our business partnership, uh, you know, general relationships around our lives and our careers, we also need to think about patterns. We need to think about the materials with which we are, we are building. And we need to think about how we measure success at the end of the day. This seemingly is a legacy message that if we apply our hearts to it, we will uh, be able to guarantee some result. And uh, what is happening in our world today will not be able to affect our own relationship. Remember, this series has been tagged Shatterproof. How do you shatterproof the vital relationships that God has brought into your life? Genesis chapter 6, uh, I'll read from uh, verse 13. The Bible says, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the heart is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them, uh, 
with the earth. Next verse. He said, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make room in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. So we see two materials here, gopher wood and pitch. Then the Bible says, uh, next verse, it says, and this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. So we see another thing there, which is uh, the measure uh, and the, 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 the pattern that God is giving. Uh, so 50, 30, you know, and all that, and, and 30 cubits, height, width, and God was specific about how he wanted this done. Yeah, next verse. Uh, and then he says, uh, there shall be a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from uh, above, and set the door of the ark in the side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third deck. So three decks, not one. God said, don't build bungalow for this, this ark. No, if you build it as bungalow, the flood will swallow you. <laughs> he said, build it in three levels. These are specifics that God was given as a, as a matter of pattern to Noah. Verse 17 says, And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which, the breath, uh, in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. Verse 18, But I will establish my covenant. Look at that. I will establish my covenant. Can you ever tap your neighbor and say, God has a covenant with me? <laughs> say, I'm a child of God. <laughs> say, I have a covenant with God. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't know Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you can do that today after this service. And you come into a covenant with God. God said, I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you and your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you, and every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. That, I mean, he said, they shall be what? Can I hear one, that one more time? They shall be what? These are all patterns that God described and all kinds of materials that God described and precepts that God describes to Noah. This is how you do it. Now, just like the days of Noah, a flood has come upon the earth today. The Bible describes what will happen in the end times. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord our God will give us light. Darkness upon the earth, a flood is upon the earth today. There's a responsibility that God has placed on you and I to build an ark for our families, to build an ark for our lives. All kinds of things are happening in our world today that demands that our homes should be an ark of safety. That the way we go about building relationships, we must uh, uh, pursue it with intentionality, knowing that there's a pattern that we must follow, there are measures that we must follow, there are materials that we must build with if we will achieve God's original intention. Ladies and gentlemen, any covenant person that refuses to build after a divine pat pattern can still be swept away by the flood. It's not enough to be a Christian. It's not enough to be born again. Noah, God says, I have a covenant, I, I will establish my covenant with you, but yet you have to follow certain patterns. You have to follow certain precepts. You have to, you, you, you can't determine the material with which you're going to build this hack. You have to follow. You can imagine Noah says, I don't, I don't, I, I prefer plywood. I don't like gopher wood. Uh, yeah. We, 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 we probably would never see him survive the flood. And that's what many people are doing today. Building based on our preference and not a divine order. I can't build my life based on my preference. 
I had to build based on divine order and pattern. That's what makes for a shutterproof life, a shutterproof relationship, a shutterproof marriage. Is somebody stay with me today. I said, somebody stay with me today. May God give you wisdom to build your own heart. May you build according to pattern, heavenly pattern, in the name of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 5, if you read from the Amplified Translation, uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 8 and verse 5, it said, they serve as a pattern and foreshadowing. Uh, where it, it, it said, what as, what as its truth, existence, and reality in? The heavenly things. He's talking about the sanctuary. It said, for when Moses was about to erect the tabernacle, he was warned by God saying, see that you make it all exactly according to the pattern which was shown to you on the mountain. The same way God dealt with Noah, the same way God dealt with Moses, this time around was Moses on the mountain, and God said, I'm going to deliver a pattern to you to build a sanctuary. My life is a sanctuary. For God. I was born to be God's dwelling place. And if God is going to indwell me, just like Moses, it can't be anyhow. It has to be according to certain patterns. I may come in into God thinking anyhow, but the moment I get into Christ, I have to start building according to pattern. You may have gotten, uh, you know, married as unbelievers, and people are not in Christ, but when you come into Christ, you have to start seeking divine order and divine pattern to build on. Is somebody still with me today? That's very, very, very important. Very important. Very important. Exodus 25, another scripture, verse 8 and 9, and he said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you. That is the pattern of the tabernacle. And the pattern of all the furnishing, just so you shall make it. God is a stickler for followership. In fact, we all know him when we follow his divine order in the different aspects of our lives. So marriage is meant to be an earthly representation of spiritual realities. An earthly representation of spiritual realities. Marriage is not a culture of a people. It's, it's divinely ordained. It was God that said, it's not good that man should be alone and will make him a helper that is suitable for him. So man met a divine, uh, uh, you know, a divine order and then we bring our tradition into it and we tend to mess it up when we do that. So Moses built according to divine order Noah built according to the divine order. Our marriages and homes are meant to be, uh, you know, a, a tabernacle of God's presence as well. Our relationships are vehicles through which divine counsel is established. Through which divine counsel is established. My relationship, I must see as a special purpose vehicle. SPV, we call them. You know, in business, we set up special purpose vehicles, SPVs, with which we want to do certain things. I mean, business people here understand what I'm talking about, and know most people here should, should, will probably even have done that before. Sometimes you register a, a, a company, and you say it's an SPV. It's just for this purpose. The same way, when God looks at you and I, the relationships that he's bringing into our lives, especially your marriage, is, is one... You know, it's an SPV that God is setting up to fulfill a particular purpose. So if I'm going to run it based on my preference and my mind, I will be abusing or negating God's original intention. That's why you and I need to be careful. Marriage is a channel for expressing the dominion mandate. As we procreate, heaven is established. Because we're bringing forth the seed of the righteous that will prosper in the earth and bring the will of God to bear in the societies of our world today. The kingdom of God is being built and being spread across the world. The will of God, the intentions of God, as we follow a divine order and a divine pattern. Uh, uh, and the Bible teaches us about many things. 
that also explains to us that marriage is not just what you do anyhow, that, that God-ordained relationships are not supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, worked through just anyhow. That we have to follow certain patterns because uh, especially marriage. Let me even zero in on marriage a lot more today. Especially marriage. Because all through the scriptures you see the kingdom of God being compared to a marriage. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 2, the Bible says there that the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. In Revelations 19, verse 7, 8, and 9, it, is, it, it says, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And this, this is revelation of God's intent and what will happen after now. What is happening now, the church is the, is the bride of Christ. According to Ephesians you know, chapter 5 uh, 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 and verse 23, the church is the bride of Christ, even in the hereafter. There will still be the marriage supper of the Lamb. Everything around the formation of the kingdom of God is, is you know, described around marriage. So when you see the devil and the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of the end time, attacking marriage so strongly today, please understand, it's not human beings that have been attacked. It's God's original intention. The spirit of the Antichrist attacks and goes straight into the heart of God's original intention. That's what is being attacked. So we have all kinds of variants of the pattern that have deviated from the original intention. Are you still with me today? And there's confusion everywhere. Because man is open to the deception of freedom. So from freedom of speech to human right, I do me, you do you. And somebody say, God, know the verse. God, the verse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's not, it's not that. You can't just do you and you say, God, know the vex. No. Because the truth is that if I want to do me, I have crazy things to do. And it suits me. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Life has to be lived under certain boundaries. The burden of freedom is responsibility. You can't claim freedom without any sense of responsibility. I can't just say it suits me to be slapping all of you this morning. Yeah, and I just enter this congregation now, bass, boss, bass, boss. I mean, I should be arrested before the service is over. Am I saying the truth? Yeah. Because I know the kind of church members I have. No, you, you, I mean, there are responsible people, dignified people at the Elevation Church. This is not the kind of church where a pastor just does nonsense and everybody's looking. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You know, we see all kinds of things in the media and you wonder, where do they export those church members from? Are they from Mars? <laughs> or from Pluto? Because you see a pastor walking over people. What's that? You understand? You're just trampling on people's dignity and sense of humanity and all that. What's that? We didn't, Jesus didn't do that. What kind of spirit would descend upon a man of God? <laughs> Let me leave that for another day. I mean, the world is crazy. Both in church, outside of the church, all kinds of crazy things are happening because people have thrown away decorum. Everybody wants to do their stuff. So today you can marry an animal. Yeah, and you still expect us to treat you as a human being. Yeah. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. And you say it's your right to do that. We live in a time where people want to, they feel it's okay to have an open relationship. You, you just need to declare, like when we, what we do when we're entering a different country, just declare what you're bringing in. Yeah. Just go through customs and declare. You know, you know like when you're entering a country, you say anything to declare, nothing to declare. You go this way. That's how some people want to run married. So I, so I have a guy that I like, I'm just declaring. Yeah, that's will be, can he visit? 
you know, and he can pass the weekend with us. And the man too will say, ah, I just found one babe. Yeah, you, even you, you will like her. Yeah. So, as in, this is confusion. <laughs> Are you following me right now? Yeah. And this is where the world is going. And everybody is ailing and say, go on. Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness. People, when the Bible says darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people, you know what some people think? They think the sun will not shine again. That's when darkness has covered the earth. No, it's not that kind of darkness they're talking about. It's this kind of darkness that I'm describing that is becoming pervasive in, mar- in marriage relationships, for instance. This is not the will of God. Let's call it spade a spade and not an agricultural implement. That's a pattern upon which we should build. Yeah. So it's time to observe and follow patterns. To observe and follow patterns. Isaiah 51, for instance, when you read uh, from verse 1 to 3, uh, the scripture describes how we should follow Abraham, for instance. He said, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you are you were healed. And to the hole of the pit from which you were dug out. Look at Abraham, your father. And to Sarah, who bore you. For I called them alone, and I blessed them and increased them. And he starts to say, look, if you follow this, the next thing, the next verse there, says, for the Lord will comfort Zion. And will comfort our waste places. It will make her a wilderness like Eden, and a desert like the garden of the Lord. Say so joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the voice, voice of melody. That's what happens when we follow God-ordained patterns. So look at Abraham, the rock from which you were cut out. Follow after that. And Jesus challenged the Pharisees of his days in John 8, and verse 39 and 40. Uh, the Bible says, they, uh, they answered him and said, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you are Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. You will do the works of Abraham. If you're Abraham's student, you will follow after Abrahamic pattern. Today, how many believers can say, I'm following after Abrahamic pattern in the way, in, in my love of hospitality, in my love of generosity, at following through and, and persevering even through difficult situations? I mean, you may say Abraham missed it, but only once, and he repented. And then he followed God again. And God said, Ishmael will not be the son of promise. You still have to wait. And he reckoned with his, 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 his feelings and then turned everything around. Glory be to Jesus. I said that to mean for every, anyone here who may be out of line completely, there's still room to turn things around. Still room to turn this. Why did God allow Abraham to, to, to miss it once or to mess up once? To say, look, sometimes you, you, you miss it, but you don't turn that to your lifestyle. Yeah. You don't turn that to your lifestyle. Abraham could have gone back to God and said, look, uh, Ishmael is okay. Oh. This A guy is okay. I won't fire Sarah self. Yeah, let me just stay with, you know, all that kind of. No. It was even Abraham that told Agar, let this woman go, you know, and all that. This is what God is saying. We can repent and follow what God is saying. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So observe and follow patterns from God. That's what I'm saying. Observe and follow patterns from God. Uh, it's important that we ask ourselves a question from time to time. Is my marriage being built according to God's pattern? Is my marriage being built according to God's pattern? Do our relationships reflect Christ? Are we using the word of God and the principles of the kingdom to build our homes? Because it's when we do that that it will reflect the right things. When we use the principles of the kingdom to build our home. And, you know, these principles are not far-fetched. Just like in the story of Noah. You cannot say, I'm not using gopher wood. I'm not using pitch. I want to use paint. Or I want to use this and that. What suits me? When the flood comes, your heart will sink. May your heart not sink. 
I said, may your heart not sink. Amen. You cannot, you know, use any pattern you like or use any material you like and just, you, you, and just imagine that everything will still be okay. Today, people are using <laughs> materials like hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, everything, all join, like we say in this part of the world. You can just use anything to build this thing. Let us be building as we are going. How can you be using lack of trust to build and you are still continuing like that? Let's address the trust issue and build according to pattern. Thank you. I know 20% of the church is following me. <laughs> Praise God. So it's important that we celebrate and honor divine patterns. The patterns of marriage in the world today. Let me add to what I said before. God's original pattern in the heart. He says, Noah, pick male and female. Today we have Adam and Steve. That is not the original pattern. Cohabitation is not the original pattern. Some people say they do it for economic reasons, especially people, even people here in Lagos and people in some other developed climes, that, that you just move in with somebody that you're not married to. It's okay to do that if you're not a Christian. The Bible is not for unbelievers to live by. It's for Christians to live by. But if you are a Christian, cohabitation is not according to pattern. It has, it, it portends a great danger, which is when the flood will come. And the flood will come. That's the issue. Remember the parable of the, that Jesus, the story Jesus told about, you know, hearing and obeying his word? He said, you are like a man who beat his house on the rock and the one who beat it on sand. sand. He said, and when the flood came, and the storm beat upon it. Did he say, if all of us will experience storm, nobody is, you know, completely, absolutely, you know, uh, uh, covered. The only thing is that when the flood comes, <laughs> when flood came upon the heart in the days of Noah, nobody was exempted. It's the hack that was built that will determine who will survive the storm. The storm is in our world today. Many relationships are sinking because they're not built according to pattern. So you cannot lay the wrong foundation in cohabitation. Things that even sound sophisticated and, you know, look uh, socially appealing like prenuptial agreement, all those things, there's nothing like that in the Bible, whether in the Old Testament or the New Testament, and especially the New Testament. I don't care how many billions God has blessed you with. If you cannot trust the God that gave you the money to lead you to the right person to marry, you better not marry at all. Than to say, come, come and sign prenup, prenup, before we, how much do you have? Really? <laughs> do, you, do you get what I'm saying? And what do you have that you have not received? If you have, not, if you have received it, why can't you talk, trust somebody else with it? All kinds of things, like I said before, open relationships. I mean, uh, some people are building according to the pattern of popular culture. There's something they call soft life now. Yeah. Just, I just want my life to be soft. And Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. So we already have soft life in Christ. Yeah. The soft life. So be free to explore because it's tr so, you know, soft life. Some people even say threesome is okay. That's three of us. All three are married, or all three are just sleeping together. All kinds of unthinkable things. That if our great great grandparents will wake up from the dead, they will run back <laughs> because of what is happening now. Singles talk about vacation. First time I heard it, I said, explain. Yeah. First time I heard it, a guy was going to Paris. And he said, I'm going on vacation. I said, well, uh, explain. He said, I'm, I'm taking uh, my babe 
on vacation. So that's vacation. And they're still like six months to their marriage, to getting married, and they are vacationing. So I said, are you going to get two different rooms? And it's Paris, you're going for crying out. That, that place is known for romance. Yeah. How do you want to survive? Obviously, you have made up your mind that this one, we are... <laughs> But that is what the world is doing. And then we too are patterning after that. Absolutely unscriptural, if you ask me, and if you ask the Bible. You just have to choose. Is this a Christian union or not? Because if it's a Christian union, there are patterns that we must follow. And when we get it wrong, we come back and rebuild according to pattern. But we must never forget that there are patterns to follow. So single people must keep God's pattern in mind as they choose their spouse and enter into relationships. Must keep God's pattern in mind. Must keep God's pattern in mind. Can I tell you the truth? A, a lot of marital success depends on who you marry. In fact, about 70 to 80% of marital success is about who you marry. So you have to choose right, singles. You have to choose right. You can't afford to allow all those vacation kind of things to cover your emotions. You know there's something they call brain relocation syndrome. It happens when emotion sets in. When boy meets girl. And chemistry is, you know, it's happening like what we learned in titration. You understand what I'm saying? Where you're pouring chemical and colors are changing. Do you, do you remember that? in elementary chemistry, that you add acid to base, and this uh, uh, color will just change. Yeah, and then you know that uh, there's neutralization. <laughs> That's how people's brains are neutralized. When chemistry sets in, you just be saying yes, yes to everything. Then later, all of a sudden, the scale comes down. The real color starts to show. But because you, you, did, you put the cart before the horse, you lost the capacity for discretion, for reasoning. You set yourself up wrongly. It has implications because marrying the wrong person will give you frustration. It may still work, but it's like driving a car with one flat tire or two. You know, it, it takes a lot to get to your destination. But when you have all the wheels working well and all the tires well inflated, you have speed. May God grant you speed. Yeah. I say, may God grant you speed yeah. in the name of Jesus. And that's why you need to be careful. Uh, use materials like gold. Use materials like gold. That's another thing I want to lay out on it. You know, we we'll talk about materials as well. Use materials like gold. First Corinthians 3, when you read from verse 10 to 13, he said, according to the grace which was given to me, this was Paul writing, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no one foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ. Say so now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will, will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. What, what's this saying? You know, when you build with gold, when fire comes, it doesn't change anything. In fact, it becomes more beautiful. Gold is refined through fire. It doesn't react with any other metal. It's, it, gold just purifies it. If you build with the right foundation, pressure will come, but it makes it sweeter. Are you still with me today? The Bible talks about all those things that Noah used to build. The materials. If you're into construction here, you have an idea, you have built something before you know. Anything you build without reinforcement, steel reinforcement, you know, 
solid concrete. But today, people build with all kinds of things and expect a different result. Houses are built with different quality of materials. Heaven is referred to as a city paved with gold. And we all want to go there. But we can give ourselves heaven on earth sometimes when we choose to build with the right materials. Because when you build the right material in your home, you are the one that's going to live there. You're the one that's going to live there. Choose gold for your relationships and marriages. Choose gold. Can you tap your neighbor and say, choose gold? Yeah, choose gold. Choose gold. Choose the right materials. Choose the right materials. Today, materials that people are building with, people are building with human philosophies. Human philosophies. You know, don't trust anybody, for instance. You don't need help from anyone. All kinds of philosophies. Philosophies from some. No woman, no cry. Yeah. Fair woman. Fair woman. You know, all those kind of things. You go on social media today, you just say fair woman. Ah, fair woman. Oh. Yeah. And it's seeping into our hearts. These are human philosophies. Philosophies that are based on one person's experience only. One person's experience cannot determine my own life. The person who sang, no, woman, no cry. Only God knows what women do, did to him. Yeah. I cannot build my life on that. I would rather build my life on the words of the one that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am your compass. I am the way. I am the truth. And the Bible says it was like all men tempted just like we were, but yet without sin. That's the person I want to build my life after. Because philosophies of men will come from their bitterness, from their anger, their experiences, and some of us will swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Especially these days of social media. You can stay on social media for two hours scrolling and you're engaging the philosophies of men. By the time you finish, you feel like slapping your wife. Because it's, it's seeping in. Human philosophies. What about traditions of men? Women should be seen and not heard. Put men out of submission. All kinds of things. You know, that uh, also <laughs> human tradition these days. Get power. And Jesus said... <laughs> Wives, submit yourself to your own husband. The privilege that, I mean, there's no difference between a man and a woman. Man is not superior to a woman. Man just has the privilege of responsibility. And if he will take that responsibility well, it requires that we are one in submission. Are you still with me today? Yeah. Yeah. It's the privilege of leadership. I take it responsibly and you submit, then we can go together. So all this uh, 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 feminism and all those kind of things, these are human traditions, human philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> because when we stretch it, we stretch it to the other extreme. And we start to spoil things and turn life on its head. The scripture is balanced. You didn't write it, I didn't write it, Paul writing to Timothy, he said every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Yeah. So nobody, you know, actually wrote the scripture. God inspired people to pen their thoughts. And these are the things that we, we, we build our homes with. You can't build with, uh, with the fruits of the spirit, for instance, in your home. Joy, love, peace, gentleness, patience. Galatians 5 and 22. It's called the fruit of the spirit. Some people want to build with gift of the spirit. Yeah. That's why even gift of the physical self. So you give a woman a car today, tomorrow you slap her. And then when you say, hey, but, I, but I gave you a car now, you know I love you. Don't love me with gift, love me with your character. Yeah. 
Are you still with me today? Yeah. Just so many things that have turned you know, on, 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 upside down. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Let's build according to pattern. 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 Let's use the right materials. Choose gold. Let it be gold standard home. See, everything you are doing today, you are not doing just for yourself. When Noah was building the ark, he was building for a generation. Think about your grandchildren. Think about your great-grandchildren. Hundred years from today, what should they say about grandpa and grandma? What's the legacy? Noah built not just for himself, he brought his kids and their spouses in. You know, and all that. He brought everybody in. He brought animals in, in pairs, male and female. He built for a whole generation. And the storm, the flood coming on our world today will be extremely destructive. You and I need to focus building according to pattern, Building with the right materials, not the traditions of men. Young people today, they've turned, I mean, our world has turned the marriage ceremony into an industry. And young people are getting drowned in it. That's another cesspool. All of a sudden, a wedding proposal requires organizer. That I want to tell somebody that I want to marry you. It has a budget to be able to say it. And that's how some people judge the person that will propose to them. Did you see? Just because of Instagram and Facebook. These are just traditions of men. It's okay if you can afford it. But if you can't, <laughs> you, will, you will have started destroying the foundation of what you are building before you even started. I want to tell you that I love you. I want to marry you. It's my choice whether I kneel down, I lie down, I stand up. And all that. Because the big question we are not asking is this. Is it the ambience that makes you say yes or the person? Yeah. But it's just the pressure of social media. Because what happens to you just posting the ring and it's okay? Must you show all the the different things, the arrangement, how it came in, all the people, the song, they will now arrange everything. Yeah. I know there's war going on right now. Yeah. So people are just saying, it's enough, go and, go and sit down. Go and sit down, don't go see anything again. <laughs> And somebody say, Pastor, why, why is it that it's when it's my turn? I am not preaching this kind of message. <laughs> Glory to God. The big question today is this. Be careful. Be careful. The big question is, are you building according to the pattern? Are you building with the right materials? Where are you sourcing your raw materials for building your home from? Is it just popular culture or scriptures? Is it popular culture or scriptures? And patterns that have worked with other people. Because some of our parents that were celebrating their 50th, 60th wedding anniversary, they were very, they, they engaged moderation. Yeah. Because some people finish wedding ceremony today, the indebtedness is already drowning them. Yeah. 
And for the first three years of the marriage, they are paying debt. And that's what leads to argument, and the marriage is already pulling apart. And the people who saw all those things, who ate your food, they have gone. They're having fun in their own homes. But somebody's calling you, you're not picking, because you're not finished paying for Ketra, paying for... I mean, today, people do wedding and have like seven or eight different kind of food. What happened to just Amala and rice? <laughs> let me just end. Let, let me end. Let me end. Let me end. <laughs> and please, if you are watching online, I need to get me straight. I'm not saying that your life should be boring or anything like that. I'm saying that moderation is key. If you pull the foundation of what you are building in a different direction, the center will not hold again. For the next five years, that center is what you are contending with. And before you know it, you are second-guessing, even the whole coming together. Uh, somebody saying, uh, maybe I'll talk to my lawyer. Talk to your lawyer what? I, I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. We need to put things in place to make sure that we follow God. Lastly today, the metric, how we measure success, especially with our lives and with our spiritual life. I'd love to close on that. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Heaven measures success of my life and of my relationship and even of my spiritual life based on one thing. Love, love, love. The law of love supersedes every other law in the scripture. Which is the greatest of all the commandments that has Jesus? Say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might and all that, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, against this, there's no law. That means it, 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 it covers everything. It's the greatest thing, law, in the scriptures and in life is law. Law. Today, we have people who measure success with material things, who measure success of their own, with how big the house is, how many cars, where we go for vacation. But even when we go on that vacation, we don't talk. Yeah. You see two people sleeping in different rooms on vacation. The children can see. See, any form of Christianity that does not predispose you to be a better lover of God and man is fake. Yeah. Yeah, it's fake. How do you claim to love God that you cannot see when you cannot love human beings that you can see? That's what the scripture says. Yeah. How? Today, people chase God that is not missing. But the lack of building according to pattern and the right material turns you to a prayer warrior. Not because you love God. But the effect of all your shenanigans is what turns you to a prayer warrior. Because when the issues come, we're now chasing God all over the place. God says, I want fellowship. Somebody says, I have problems. So we're mixing it, you know, everything is now like upside down. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray that God will solve our problems for us. But if that's the only reason why we chase God, there's a problem. And it's filtering into our relationships. Because we have people who speak loud tongues, people who carry big Bibles, but there's no love in their union. The kings, pastors, and ministers in churches, we're not investing in our homes and building a life of love through our relationships. But yet, we spend 10 hours in prayer. We can quote Hebrew, Greek, Latin, whatever language. And we don't speak the tongues of men again. We speak tongues of angels. <laughs> because the real measure of spirituality, the real measure of your spirituality is the fruit, not the gift. Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them. What fruit is your relationship bearing? I want to challenge somebody here today. If your relationship is failing, make it a project to rework it. 
That is the true measure of your spirituality, not your church attendance. Yeah, not your church attendance. That's the true measure of your spirituality. Face it. Face it. We can all make our God-ordained relationships heaven on earth. Jesus said, when you pray, say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we follow heavenly patterns, we'll get earthly effect. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. That is like what is happening in heaven. Today, people pack important things aside and face the things that are not important and keep pursuing and, you know, success without a sense of legacy is useless. Yeah. They will soon forget. You live up to 80 or 90, you go. But you don't have any serious relationship. You know, you don't, you have fought everyone that seemed to love you. They're like Mekisedek, no father, no mother, no end of day or no beginning of day, no spouse, no children. The children are cranky and angry and they have gone their ways. You have not developed the capacity to build love and operate like Christ. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. Let's slow down and think about our legacy. And our legacy starts from our homes. It starts from our vital relations. It starts from that business partnership that endured a lifetime. You know, I was, I was so glad. This past week, I officiated the funeral of my friend's dad. The man, I think, was 82 or 85 or so. And, you know, when I got in there and I said, give me the order of service, and he gave me, and I saw there's only one eulogy, and the eulogy was supposed to be taken by my friend, who was the first son. I, I, I just walked up to him and I said, no, let somebody else also take one more eulogy. Don't be the only one to talk about your dad. And he said, oh, PG, that's wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. So I said, give us one name now. So he gave us the name. It's dad's friend, Dr. So-and-so. So I told one of my colleagues, announce this person for eulogy. When the man came up on, on the podium to, to eulogize his friend, he said, there are friends that are friends. He said, friends in inverted commas. He said, but the man that I'm eulogizing today is a friend indeed, a friend in need, a friend for all season. And he went on to talk about his friend and their life together. He said they, they were friends for 62 years or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he told stories from things they did together for projects, for different things. And I sat down there and I was saying, look, You know, when the scripture says, <laughs> let my hand be like that of the righteous. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's how I felt like that. This is how I want somebody to speak about me. To say he, he was a friend indeed. This transcends marriage. It's about relational capacity to follow God, fulfill all of God's plans and purposes for your life while you build enduring relationships that God will be proud of. Everyone will celebrate and they will be part of your legacies forever. That's on your feet, everyone. <clears throat> Lift your two hands to Jesus and bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. The messages for this series are very huge challenge, challenges for all of us. I even have to watch and listen to some of them again. But I needed to know that God has a plan for your life. And those plans will be fulfilled based on how you keep relationships. Relationships that God will bring into your life. Lift your two hands and receive the help of God today. Say, Father, help me to steward, to rightly steward the vital relationships that you are bringing into my life. Help me to rightly steward my marriage. Help me to rightly steward my relationships with my children. To rightly steward my relationship with siblings. To rightly steward my relationship with with business partners. Help me to write this to my relationships with colleagues. Help me to build a home. Help me to build according to pattern. Help me to build an hack like Noah did. The hack 
that can withstand every storm. Somebody speak to God today. Speak to God today. Speak to God today. Speak to God today. Help me to build according to pattern. Help me to build with the right materials. I want to build with love. I want to build with patience. I want to build uh, with self-control. Lord, give me self-control. Let that be the prayer of your heart today. I want to build with the right materials. Take hatred away from the mix. This concrete mix that I'm using to build. Take offense away. Father, heal my heart. Take animosity away. I want to build with trust, not lack of trust. Help me not to be the one that breaks trust. Help me to be a trusted person in my relationships. Help me not to measure success just with money. Help me to measure success by the legacy that I'm building. And my character. 